Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for the many blessings you've already bestowed upon us in this worship experience. We pray now that you will add the anointing and the blessing of your word to this already rich experience and bless us, O oh God, as only you can. And we ask it in the holy and righteous name of Jesus. Let the church say amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Joshua, chapter 1. Joshua, chapter 1. And we shall read the first 12 verses for your hearing. After the death of Moses the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. In every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you as I said to Moses. From the wilderness, this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. And no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with, with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For this people you shall divide an inheritance. The land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And then Joshua commanded the officers of the people saying, Pass through the camp and command the people saying, Prepare provisions for yourselves. For within three days you will cross over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. Let the church say amen. amen. I want to preach this morning from the subject, getting ready to move. Getting ready to move. How many of you have come to realize that God is intent, he is intentional, intentional about blessing his children? And God is intent on completing his plan. Many of you have dreams and plans that God has placed in your heart. And I want to encourage you this morning that whatever God has spoken to your heart, whatever God has revealed to you about your future, 
It will come to pass. For his plan in the lives of his children and uh, nowhere is it more evident than in this account of Scripture. Joshua and the children of Israel entering the promised land. And so our Lord is determined to move churches. He, he is determined to move believers forward and not backward. And God is intent on revealing the important information that is valid for our success. And so we must participate with God in, in completing his plan. For as God begins to move, we must be ready. Uh, we must begin immediately to pay attention to what God is doing. Uh, we must be prepared to follow him wherever he decides to lead us. We must faithfully follow his leading. Because the best is yet to come. But now, before we can move forward with all that God has for us, there are some things we must understand. Uh, because you see, as we move with God, we're not moving on our own strength and power. We're not moving in our own intellect, in our, our own inf influence, but we're moving according to God's will. And so, first of all, we must understand the plan. Following the death of Moses, God wanted Joshua to know that his plan for Israel had not changed. And that the time had come for Israel finally to get ready to move. Now, it is important as we look at this text this morning to note that while much had transpired since Israel's failure to believe God at Kadesh Barnea. You remember the time there when, when they decided that they would take a vote? Right. Yeah. Uh, how many of you have come to realize that sometimes the majority is not always right? Oh, yes, yeah, sometimes the majority may not be on line with God. But his plan was still waiting to be accomplished. And so certainly following their departure from Egypt, Israel had attempted their own plans. But in spite of that, God remained with his children. Isn't God good? Even when we decide to do our own thing, God is still supportive. God is still present. God is still there to aid us, even when we get off track. Oh, I believe there's a witness here, somebody. Anybody out here ever got off track? God told you to go right and you decided to go left? God told you to pray and you decided to play? Oh, somebody ought to help me in this church this morning. And so in light of this, we need to remember that there are many plans about success and fulfillment. There are plans for finances uh, and destinations, but these are frequently based on incomplete knowledge and understanding of God. And so we need to know what God wants to do. We, we need to understand God's plan for our lives and our church. You recall for the children of Israel, his plan was for them to leave Egypt. To cross the wilderness. To enter the promised land. And live there experiencing God's blessings. But for the people today, 
The plan is for us to leave the former lives that we've lived. And God wants us to enter into a new life of faithfulness. God wants us to take full possession of his blessings. God wants us to connect with him spiritually so that we might fulfill his mission in the world. And so turn to somebody this morning and tell them, do you know the plan? Well, if you know it, why don't you follow it? Because if we know the plan, then we can understand the power. Along with his plan, God always supplies the means or the power. And as we pursue his plans, it must be with the right power. Uh, because you see, some people are trying to pursue God's plan with their own power. But how many of you have come to understand that your power may run short? Your power may not take you where you think it will. You know, even SCE and G every now and then can run out of power. And if you don't pay your bill, you sure enough know that somebody can turn your power off any time they decide to. But when you connect with God's power, it's always enough. And you know, sometimes God's power is not the power of the majority. Because you see, sometimes the majority doesn't, work, doesn't rule. We need to understand that sometimes even God, like Joshua and Caleb, when the people were decided, no, we can't take it. So they're giants in the land. Who are we? We're just small people. They said, we're nobody. Caleb and Joshua stood up among the people and said, we are well able to take the land. Yes, and that's what God is listening for today. He, he's not listening for the majority, but he's listening, listening for one or two who are willing to stand up and agree with his word that yes, indeed, we are more than conquerors. Oh yes, not the power, the majority rules with God. But what rules with God is faith. For when God sees faith, he shows up. Too many of us, we looking for numbers. So, well, let me see who on our side. Let's see who's with us. But God's not looking at your numbers. God is looking at the hearts of faith. God is looking for somebody who's willing to step out and believe him. If you wait on the majority, you never accomplish anything. You waiting for folk to affirm you. You waiting for people to tell you how wonderful you are, how amazing you are. But I just stopped by Ebenezer to tell you, don't worry about what the folk are saying. If I had listened to folk, I would have never gone to seminary. I would have never gone to study and prepare for ministry. They say, you got a good job here. You going to leave all of this? I say, yes. Don't you know you got a paycheck coming every two weeks? And you going to leave this job? Talking about you going to preach? Yes. <laughs> to go somewhere you've never been? Yes. And I want you to know that if God had not led me, I wouldn't be here this morning at Ebenezer. Yeah. 